Hi, my name is Christina and I am your librarian here at Christina's Bookshelf. And today I am bringing you the Christmas Song Book Tag, originally by, so I don't lie, Haley in Bookland. And I will link that down below so you can go check the original if you want. I printed off my questions because I don't like to read off my phone. I'm kind of old school in a sense. Today, to get us through this wonderful book tag, I have my champagne pouring freely and my hairbrush because we all know that because it says the Christmas song book tag, you have to have the international symbol for a faux microphone. Be prepared people, it's about to get awesome in here. So per the usual, I'm going to try to hit the MF side and the LGBT side. Get all across the spectrum since that's what I read. I'm gonna try to do both with my answers. Let us begin. Number one, you're the mean one, Mr. Grinch. Name a villainous character you couldn't help but love. In the MF world, I think I'm gonna have to go with Julian from the Twist Me series by Anna Zares. This is a dark romance. I cannot express that enough. I mean, we're talking kidnapping, arms dealer, international situations, dark. That is a villain though that I could not help but love. However, I did a book tag not too long ago and I was like, who would you say thanks but no thanks to? <laughs> I couldn't help but love Julian, but no thanks. In the LGBT world, a villainous character you couldn't help but love. I haven't decided if Freddy from the Inheritance series by Amelia Faulkner is good or bad, but I kind of love him. And then let's think of another one here. There's a character that we're starting to explore in the Stone Society by Faith Gibson. He is a gargoyle, he is gay, we know who his mate is, we know what he's done. Is he a villain? Is he not a villain? We're kind of still up in the air, but I've already fallen in love with him. As my husband calls it, let's take a pausey break and refuel. Number two. And all I want for Christmas is you. Which book do you most hope to see under your Christmas tree? Um, <laughs> all of them. I would love to have a billion books and like totally fill up my bookcase back here. I would like to see the next book in the um, Dark Artifices series by Cassandra Clare. That would be amazing. Hush by Tal Bauer, the paperback. Hmm, there's so many, so, so many. All of Julia Kinn's books in paperback under my Christmas tree. I will take uh, Gretchen, is it Gretchen Galloway? Gretchen Halloway, take her books in, under the Christmas tree. She's a good rom-com writer as well. There's so many books, so many books. Like just sign me up for the National Library of Congress. We'll just call it that. And then we have Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. And name a character that overcomes major obstacles and learns to believe in themselves. Oh, there's so many. One that comes to mind immediately is an Annabelle Joseph book, Taming Lady Townsend. It's book number one in her Spanked series. It's absolutely my favorite. Like. I looked forward to Minette's story, which is book number three, so much. And it was really good. All four of the books in that series are fantastic. If you are into light BDSM, domestic discipline, you don't want anything big, dramatic, I highly suggest the Spank series by Annabelle Joseph. Taming Lady Townsend, though, is my favorite because when we first meet her, you think, man, this chick is a stuck up bee. But as you get to meet her, you get to understand why she is how she is. And watching her husband, yes, it's called taming, but he's letting her open up. He's letting her explore being her. And I thought it was beautiful. I mean, one of the major things at the end of the book is them giggling together and not caring who sees. And beforehand, she would not be caught dead laughing in front of society. So I just, that would be one of my big ones is, Taming Lady Townsend by Annabelle Joseph. The whole Spank series is fantastic. Um, in the MM world, name a character that overcomes major obstacles and learns to believe in themselves. Uh, Michael at Michael's Awakening by Jacqueline Osborne is a big one. The crap that he dealt with in his past and how he overcame it and became the man that he is with Gabriel. Mm. 
You stole my heart. Question number four. Santa Claus is coming to town. Woo woo! Santa Claus is coming to town. This question has two parts. Which character do you think would be on top of the naughty list? And which character do you think would be on top of the nice list? I think this question is quite debatable considering that what's your definition of naughty versus nice? Because some things are like dastardly dirty and naughty, but I would consider it nice. But if we're gonna go into the traditional sense, which character do you think would be on the top of the naughty list? Okay, we're gonna pick naughty bad characters, but I might actually include some naughty characters too. Oh, and, and number three, another one. Tad from the Upending Tad series by Cora Knight. He overcomes some major obstacles to find and believe in himself. See, champagne brings it all out. Opens the locked doors. Back to this. Which character do you think would be on top of the naughty list? I've talked about this character before and I think that he would be on top of both lists. And it's in the MM world and it's Kate Anderson from the Music Within series by Faith Gibson. Definitely in Deliver Me, he's on the naughty list and he's an asshole and I loathed his existence. In Release Me, which is his book, he's on the nice list and I love his existence. He can nicely fill out both of those roles. If you don't pay the toll, then we don't get no roles. Now, if we're gonna talk about who's gonna be on the naughty list, uh, I'm going to have to go with Smith James from the Impossible series by Julia Sykes. Oh my gosh. One, have you read the Impossible series? It's FBI agents. Freaking yes. Yes, yes, yes. And the heroines are strong women. They really have to be for the crap that they've gone through in life and to be with the men that they're with, especially Miss Lydia, to be with Mr. James. He is definitely on top of that naughty, naughty list. Somebody else that would be on the actual naughty bad list. Give me a second. <laughs> Eric from Puppet Boy by Christian Baines would definitely be on the naughty list. Part of it's not his fault. I mean, he has like a huge mental disorder, but at the same time, like, dude, take your meds, take your meds or you'll be on the naughty list. Even on his meds, he would still, I think, be on the naughty list because he just has more clear thought when he's on the meds to um, manipulate, I think would be a good word. Oh, where's my microphone? Where's my microphone? Oh. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Number five. Frosty the Snowman. Which book just melts your heart? <gasps> All of them, all of them, all of them, all of them. I actually read a fantasy book last week that's MM, and it reminded me of a book that I read like two years ago when I was uh, doing writing reviews for a blog, and that book seriously melted my heart. It's called The Winter Prince by R. Cooper. The whole just kind of plot line got to me. I'm not talking about the writing, I'm not talking about anything that goes into that, not the depths of the characters, just if you had to outline the story, the whole premise of it sucked me in and oh my gosh. In the MF world, there's a series and I cannot remember the name of it, but this series seriously got to me. Let me think about it. Let me think, let me think, let me think. Here we go. Here's, I believe the third book in the series, but it's the Forever series by Deanna Roy. This book talks a great deal about loss of life. It has some very, tough subject matters to bring to you, but it does so in like one of the classiest ways I've seen done. The first one is about a boy and a girl who had pretty much been like childhood sweethearts. And in high school, they have a child who has a heart condition and doesn't make it. I think the child was alive for seven days. And then their world falls apart and they separate and they meet up again years later in college. And it's just so much happens within the story but it's written like I said in this classy way that gives you all the feels and just melts your heart. This one is probably my favorite Forever Sheltered. I believe it's book number two. No because I think the first story is two books and then this one would be book three and then there I know there's a book four but I can't remember what it's called but the Forever series by Deanna Roy in the MF world would be a book that melts your heart in a fantastic way, like 
it melted into this puddle of goo because you're just so sad. That puddle of goo mixes the crap with the good and everything gets in there and it becomes a strong, solid base. The Forever series, I highly recommend it. Ha, Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Choose a book that takes place in a country other than your own. Um, <laughs> so many. In the MF world, a good chunk of the Cronar Chronicles by Anna Zares. I'm bringing her up once again because that is like my favorite sci-fi trilogy. I effing love the Cronar Chronicles. A good portion of it takes place in Costa Rica and a good portion of it takes place off planet. So I think that would be considered like out of country, right? I would think so. And there's another one that I really like and I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head. Uh, the main character is dumped by her husband like right before their wedding. She goes ahead and goes on their honeymoon to Paris and meets a guy there. And so a good portion of the book takes place in Paris and a good portion here. And I'm trying to remember, I know book number two is forked and book number three is floored. I'm on it, just give me a second. There's so many books, but these are the ones that are like popping into my head. So you're just gonna have to deal with that. All right, let's hit up some good reads. And this is a really good series too. Like the whole thing, I would highly suggest all of them. They're funny, they're light, but they're very intense. Okay, Frenched. Frenched is the one that I was talking about. And it's, um, let me see, is this a series? Okay, so it's, the name of the book is Frenched and it's part of the Frenched series by Melanie Harlow. So it takes place part here in the States, but most of it takes place over in Paris. And then in the MM world, choose a book that takes place in a country other than your own. There's so many of them. Let's kind of just go down the line here, shall we? I mean, yeah, Enemy of the State takes place all over the world. Axios, I haven't read it yet, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't take place in the United States. Clipped by Devin McCormick takes place, uh, heaven, hell. Would you consider that part of the United States? I would consider it off states. The Arcadia Trust series by Christian Baines, which is paranormal and it's effing fantastic, takes place in Australia. I've, I've listed a lot. There's a lot of books that don't take place in the United States because there's a lot of authors that don't live in the United States or aren't from the United States and they write books that they're com comfortable with and familiar with. So that was just a handful. Gotta find my microphone again. Up, oh, actually, you know what? Let's take a pausey break. And then we have, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Which holiday theme book do you use to spread the Christmas joy? Oh, there are so many. There's one that I just thought about actually the other day. And I'm going to have to pull out my phone again and look. Okay, the MM book that I was just thinking about the other day is Magic and Mistletoe by Annabelle Jacobs. I think that it is so fantastic and has a little bit of fantasy and magic in it. And I think that's what like the holiday season is about is to bring a little magic and fantasy and just this blossom of happiness that kind of falls over you. You have this aura that just oozes wonderfulness until it's too much and then you gotta pull back and do something and then like it comes all over again. That's one of my really good feel good ones. Let me try to find, okay. The lesbian romance that I'm talking about is Carolyn for Christmas by Lucy Carey. So cute, adorable, has all the feels, the holiday magic is there. I loved it. So far this year, I've only read a couple of holiday stories. Another one that brings on the feels though, from last year would be, oh, it's from Elliot Cooper and it's a Hanukkah story and I wanna say it's Hearts of Light. Yes. Hearts of Light by Elliot Cooper. Very, very good. The next one is Sleigh Ride and the lyrics just left my brain. So, sorry. Which fictional character would you choose to spend the holidays with? Doesn't have to be a love interest. And what's the fun of that? Okay. Who am I gonna spend the holidays with? Well, I mean, of course, Sergey and Sasha from the Executive Office series. Like, <laughs> I can't get out without naming those boys. I totally would spend Christmas with them. One, just because I love them. Two, uh, Russia. I would love to spend Christmas with the characters from the Chaser series by Tanya Sands. Get my BBW self in there and maybe attract me a hot guy. I mean, my husband's really hot and I love him, but you know, I mean, it's fiction. Number nine, I really must go. Baby, it's cold outside. Which book that you didn't like would you sacrifice to a fire to warm yourself in the cold? I'm not gonna name the author, but I would put all of their books in the fire to warm myself, and that's harsh. So like I said, I'm not gonna name them. 
but I don't know if I have a book. <laughs> we could do Allegiant by Veronica Roth, throw that in the fire because that was absolutely ridiculous. And I mean, if I have to, I'll throw my Twilight series if I'm at, I mean, honestly, I might throw like all my books if I was that cold, but probably not. Somebody else would have to do it and then it would be war. And then number 10. Do you hear what I hear? Which book do you think everyone should read? I think you should just pick up a book and read it. I honestly think you should say, this is a book I would never read. Pick a genre you've never explored, a theme that you think is the worst ever, a trope that you just don't like, and figure out, is it the author that you don't like? Is it really the trope? Is it the genre with that trope you don't like? I, for the longest time, hated like nerds and jocks together. Loathed, loathed. And then Annabeth Albert wrote a story and I'm trying to think of the name of it. It's in the Gamer series. You have a Navy SEAL and a nerd. And I was like, ugh, really? I will never question it again. Like. I think it was just the authors that I had read before that I really hated that trope because this one was so fantastic. Yes, okay, Connection Error by Annabeth Albert. It's number three in the Gamer series. So that's what I'm going to say to you. Pick something that you wouldn't normally read. Get something that's like out of your comfort zone. I would not be here today if I had not taken that step outside of my comfort zone. And if you're not ready to read something outside your comfort zone, join some Facebook groups, join some Goodread groups that have kind of something that you might be interested in, but you haven't gotten that far to actually purchase a book or check out a book. Or I know authors have a, or have a very difficult time getting paid with Kindle Unlimited. I did it for maybe six months to be able to explore and find new authors. When I decided to change genres and not just read MF, I was kind of in a slump. So I got Kindle Unlimited so I could get out there, see the world, explore some different things. And once again, that's kind of how I ended up here. Joining a couple of Facebook groups, just kind of seeing how things worked and going from there. You don't have to jump in head first, diving, whatever you want to. Honestly, get something, put your toe in the water. If you're thinking, okay, Christina, I'm gonna try out some MM books. I highly recommend the Portland Heat series by Annabeth Albert. They're very romantic, I mean, very tropey and wonderful. The sex scenes are not so just in your face. A YA book that if you're not, if you're like, oh, I really don't know about YA. You know, I'm not into all that crazy stuff. Twilight, the Mortal Instruments, Divergent, the Hunger Games. A new author that I would highly recommend is Jill Bowers with the Immortal Writer series because there's a lot in there that uh, us as adults can kind of connect with too. And we can read it with our kids, you know, not read it with our kids, which is what I did. But that's something I recommend. Which book do you think everyone should read? Depending on what your favorite kind of genre is, we can go from there. But I honestly suggest take a step out of your comfort zone because you never know what you're going to find. It could be the most amazing step you've ever taken. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the Christmas song book tag. If you've enjoyed this book tag and my crazy shenanigans, I'm going to ask that you help me with that YouTube algorithm and give me a like. Leave me a comment. I'd love to interact with all of you guys and go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I try to get something new out every Sunday through Thursday, but I honestly never know what time. And that is the magic of the subscribe button is that you will get a notification when I have something new for you. If you're like me and think this chick's pretty awesome, down below I'm going to leave stalker links aplenty. Click, investigate, enjoy. This was the Christmas song book tag originally by Haley in Bookland. Once again, I will leave that link down below for you also along with all the others. Cheers.